case you've forgotten, gentlemen, over 500 lives were lost when the Vanderlip Dam gave way. Core samples have shown that beneath this bedrock is shale similar to the permeable shale in the Vanderlip disaster. It couldn't withstand that kind of pressure. And now you propose yet another dirt bank terminus dam with slopes of two and a half to one, 112 feet high and a 12,000 acre water surface. Well, it won't hold. I won't build it, it's that simple. I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. Thank you. This is the guy who owned the store. His name was King. Steiglitz, safe and loft. It's been dusted. One knife puncture from the rear. Six-inch blade. Oh, right through the lung and heart. About 3 a.m. Two dollars and 25 cents. Would you say that's a bargain safe and loft? Sanford? Yeah, Doc, you sure got in a hurry. Well, luckily I was in the neighborhood. Where's the baby? Oh, right, right over here. How long has he had the mustache? Uh, since he was one. Pretty big for two years old, isn't he? Yeah, I used to give him that kind of bread that helps you grow eight ways. Uh, what did it make? How old he is anyway? Oh, it makes quite a difference. I'm a pediatrician. Oh. I'm Methodist, myself. <laughs> hey, I'm terribly sorry about the mix-up, Doctor. Well, as long as I'm here, maybe I can help. All right, I hope so. Oh. Where does it hurt, little fellow? <laughs> no, I just got a headache. Well, let's have a look. Uh, maybe you can give him a pill. Um, perhaps. Uh, would you hold this, please? <laughs> Wow. You're lucky you don't have to take two of these. <laughs> I'll get you a bucket of water. Take a deep breath. Again. Once more. It's all right. All right, let's have a look inside. Open the garage wide. <laughs> Say, ah. Uh... All right, Tiger, go upstairs while I talk to Daddy. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, would you stop all of this nonsense? Now, I'm a grown man, and you don't have to tell nothing to my Daddy. You can tell me. And before you close that bag, let me have a few of them lollipops. <laughs> uh, what do you think, Doc? Well, everything appears to be normal, uh, physically, that is. What is that supposed to mean? Well, uh, headaches can be caused by stress situations. Uh, I'm a great believer in psychosomatic illness. Doc, maybe, maybe you could help me. Maybe you could help me a little bit. I, I've been having a, a, a little trouble. See, I've been having them baby heart attacks. Well, uh, you need a baby heart specialist. Here's my bill. Fetty. Hey, Doc! Oh, Doc, wait a minute! You forgot something! <laughs> You know Jules Stauffer? Yes, I do. He was a client of yours, isn't that right? Yes. Wasn't he originally represented by Alvin Burton? Yes, that is correct. Why did he change representation? Because I handled him on an aggravated assault charge. That's my area, not Burton's area, so... Did Jules Stauffer express dissatisfaction with Mr. Burton? No, not at all. Burton's an excellent lawyer. You're not going after him, are you? Well, we're not going after anyone, Mr. Kirkland. We are simply trying you know to... David Krebs? We are simply trying to review certain accusations to determine whether or not they are true and to more or less clean our own house. So please do not over-dramatize these proceedings. This is not the McCarthy hearings. Oh, that's a relief. So you're not going to ask me, are you now or have you ever been a lawyer? 
That wasn't amusing, Mr. Kirkland. Do you know David Krebs? No, it wasn't, Miss, um... Um... Packer. Packer. This isn't amusing. It is, however, ridiculous. Yes, David Krebs, I know him. Have you ever seen... Is this mic working? Do you know David Krebs? Why are we using microphones? Why don't we just talk to each other close enough? This is a hearing, Mr. Kirkland. Ah, oh, yes. It's a hearing. Uh, do you know Jules Stauffer? We've already asked that question, Mr. Kirkland. Oh, we're through with Stauffer? How about Alvin Burton? You know David Krebs? I already asked that. What did he say? He said yes. Have you ever seen him intoxicated in court? David Krebs has a speech impediment. Now, if you check your records, you'll see it's there someplace. No, that's the answer to your question. No, he doesn't drink. Doesn't drink at all. At this point, I would just like to say that what this committee is doing in theory is highly commendable. However, in practice, it sucks. And I am not going to answer any more questions. <laughs> Corner Nidoff. Be with you in a second, fellas. We ain't got a second. Where you want this stiff? Well, dealer's choice, fellas. Main performers ain't particular. Oh, there, Uncle. Ain't stiffened up on him a little bit, didn't you, sweetheart? You got no problem, Teasdale. The woman was pretty upset, Mr. Nidorf. Oh, let you shoot her through the grease a little. Uh, this a mother? Uh, daughter O'Deed. Ah. Oh. Ah, Mrs. So-and-so, strange as it may seem to you, right. we at Nidorf Brothers Mortuary consider the common agate marble the best implant following corneal donation. Keeps the natural contour of the face, and what a generous an gesture for your daughter to have made. I'm just raising the flag, Mr. Nidorf. Uh, she said she was suing us. I'm back in public service, Teasdale. This is something you ought to be able to take care of yourself. And will you, for God's sake, stop at Hopkinson Supply and pick up a bunch of ball implants. Uh, I did that on my way down here. Thank you, Teasdale. You're a great American. Waste of good marbles. You fellas are too delicate.